Welcome to the shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. And today we're going to be building a bike. I just don't understand how we have so much cat hair on everything. <laughs> So what is this beautiful, beautiful thing that you are holding? This is Niner's Air 9 RDO. We are gonna build this up today to be a single speed for Mackie, who is thinking about doing some single speed racing. So it is going to be super light, super fast, and gorgeous. I mean, this frame is absolutely gorgeous. It is really gorgeous. I really like that frame. So should we talk a little bit about what you've decided to put on this bike? In the interest of being as light as possible, we are going for XTR parts here. These are the XTR two piston XC brakes. So you don't sacrifice a lot in terms of braking power for these. They're very, very effective, especially on a light bike. And then, um, shoot, where'd those go? Hold on. Everybody hold. He is gonna do 160 mil rotors. I feel like you could have gone 140, like, at least on, on the, the back. Yeah, not gonna... But you still want to be able to stop. You're still going to go really fast. Sorry, something's itching my face, and now I'm afraid I have grease on my face. Do I have grease on my nose? No, I think you're good. For the drivetrain, we have XTR cranks. And we don't have a cassette or a shifter or a derailleur or any of that, so this is going to be a short section. This is a 32 tooth for the front. And then on the back, he is going to run a 18 tooth cog so 32 18. i think that's going to be a hard gear on a 29 but not like too hard yeah my understanding is that 32 18 is a fairly standard gearing on a 29er you could go up to a 34 if it's not hard enough basically. or i'd probably go smaller cogs oh. because that's the easier thing and then you're putting Sorry, even less looks weight very small to me yeah so it could we could go we could go smaller <laughs> so for wheels kind of throwing things together a little bit. This will be a Shimano XT front wheel and a Vittoria Demian Plus in the back. This is a wheel that we had tried to sell and then we asked for it back. Long story, but basically this is the only wheel we have that's gonna play nice with this cog. Yeah, we needed the old 11 speed or 11 and under speed hub and all of our new XTR wheels are 12 speed. So these wheels are probably not the like lightest thing, but they're pretty light. Yeah. And the tires are gonna be super light. Let's talk about these tires. We are going to put Victoria's, oops, XC race casing on this bike because this is gonna be an XC racing machine. These tires are so light, it's ridiculous. It scares me a little bit, but we actually rode this, these Mezcals, yeah, the Mezcal in Moab with the race casing. No problems whatsoever on They're much, on like much bikes. bigger bikes. Yeah, our medium bikes. So it holds up really well for what it is. I mean, it's still a XC casing. If you live somewhere of super sharp, pointy rocks. So Mackie's gonna run the Mezcal in the rear. This is a pretty low profile, but like, pretty nice and grippy still. Yeah, it rolls super well, and but also has good corner knobs. I love this tire. Me too. And the tan wall. And tan wall. And then in the front, he's gonna have the Barzo, which is just a slightly more aggressive XC tread, taller knobs, better for a front tire. Yeah, I like the traction that I get on the Barzo, so. But also still quite light. For the fork, we have the Fox 32 step cast 100 mil, also pretty light. Is this the same as the orange one? It's just black? No, so this is the performance. It's okay. not the factory one, okay. so it's not quite as, not quite as high, high end, light end. You know, at the same time, it's got that step cast, which cuts out a pretty solid amount of weight. Feels light to me. If you really want, you could always take your orange one off your XC oh, bike point. if you felt like the end result needed to be even lighter, but I think it's gonna be fine. I think the lack of like a cassette or anything is gonna make this bike actually pretty light. Okay, so Mackie is gonna run a dropper post on this bike. This is the Shimano Discover post. It is actually for gravel bikes, but I think it makes sense for this kind of super aggressive XC build and that you will get some drop this is kind of the crucial amount of drop. Yeah, it's like 70 mil. It's, not... it's great to like have a 150 mil dropper for like aggressive things, but this is enough for like XC trail kind of stuff to still be able to 
be in an aggressive descending position. Yeah, it gets it out of your way. You get a little yeah. bit more ability to move the bike. 27.2 posts, driver posts are actually kind of hard to come by. So we are gonna go the dra gravel post route and it's light. Sound like a broken record here. It's light, it's light. This is also light. And then here we've got some Expedo CXR pedals. These could really use a bath. Yeah. One day. But they're light. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Velo Senso Wilson saddle. Also light. I don't know if, I'm not sure it's like super duper light for saddles. No, but it's a really it's a nice saddle. mountain bike yeah. saddle, so. It's comfort over weight on saddles for sure. Shimano Pro handlebars and stem. These are 35 millimeter handlebars. I don't know, why do we like that? We like it. It's, it's just they're more stiffer. stable, yeah. yeah. A little more stability, which is kind of nice if you don't have that much suspension. And some Velo Attune grips. Nothing crazy there. The color palette is black, blue, and tan. I like it. A little edgy. Yeah. It's not edgy at all, but it's fine. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this entire build by myself. This is my first time doing a start to finish build. I've obviously been involved on a lot of the pieces of it, but I've never been entirely responsible for a bike that someone is then gonna go ride. Not that I'm at all nervous or anything. <laughs> People on Instagram are nervous for you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I have faith in you though. I've okay. seen you work in here. All right, shall we begin? Let us begin. Well, I think the very first thing I'm gonna do is stick this in there so that we can put the frame into the stand. Great idea. We're just leaving enough room for our stand and we're not worrying about anything else. Okay, so what's the plan? What are you gonna do first? All right, I'm gonna start with a fork. We always start with the fork. I don't know why. It's a nice thing to have on there because then you can do brakes because they attach to the fork and handlebars and stems. And wheels. For this task, you will need your new fork, which will come with a star nut, Allen keys, your headset and headset spacers, also the top cap, your stem, grease, crown race installer, star nut installer, pipe cutter, pipe file, paint pen, and a rubber mallet, which is my favorite tool. Okay, so I have done this a couple times, but I'm not quite sure I'm remembering correctly the order operations, but I think we're gonna put the, this is the crown race, right? The part Correct. around there. So we're gonna do that first. This doesn't look like it attaches in any way. You just put it on there and bang on it. Yep. I thought it was more sophisticated than that. Oh, I see why it doesn't fit, okay. Maybe put a tiny bit of grease on just cause it sure. decreases the likelihood of it creaking. I really like our grease gun. I'm really glad we have a grease gun now. It's my Christmas present to Mackie. Yep. Really romantic. It's a good task to start with because you just get to bang on things right out of the gate. Yep. Looks good to me. Obviously like you got a little grease happy there. You can also install your crown fork race with a piece of PVC, which we did for years. Pretty sure we only bought the crown fork race installer because people yelled at us on the internet. But I honestly don't, I don't understand what the downside is. That was fine. The next thing we're gonna do is basically cut this, measure the steer tube so that yeah. we can cut it. For that, we're gonna need our stem, these puppies, no, these puppies, yep. wrong puppies. Did not have an organized workspace today. I'm sorry guys, that's just unfortunately like the way it's gonna go. This is a difficult task. I can try to help by holding the fork in yeah, place. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to hold it, there's no way. So this is the part where you can really mess up. <laughs> I knew you were gonna bring up this story. Okay, so we're gonna put the silver thing down there. Does he have a name? Silver bearing. thing. The bearing. Headset bearing. I thought this was the headset bearing. They're both headset bearings. Gonna, I don't really need grease because we're just measuring. Correct. This is being a dumbbell. I think that's right. And then you just push the black guy down. But he was just sitting up there. This is the part where you determine the height of your steer tube and how much you need to cut off. Which depends a little bit on personal preference, but. You know, let's put the other spacer on there. I don't mind having a little bit above. Okay, so this is the part where once upon a time, Mackie and I were going to New Zealand for EWS races. I think so. Yeah. We were building our bikes like 48 hours before. Like, like you. you do, <laughs> like we do every time. Cause it was like an early season race. And Mackie did this, but he didn't have the stem in there. <laughs> so he cut our brand new suspension too short. 
It was a bad day. How's the Taylor Swift song go? To make a long story short, it was a bad time. The problem with marking it above that spacer. Oh, I need the little space for the top cap. So it needs to be slightly shorter. It needs to be below the top cap. Exactly, so if you did it on this higher we line, it would be space. above and we'd have to put another spacer on. Keep a clean workspace, folks. All right, next up, I'm gonna cut her. We use these pipe clamp cutter thingies. Much better than a hacksaw. Measure twice, cut once. Measure with your stem on both times. On the high end of the lower mark, basically, was what we were deciding. Yeah, right at the top of the lower mark. Yeah, that looks good. And then you don't need to tighten it too much initially. You just want to spin it around once and then tighten it a little bit more. Tightened it too much, do I? Now we're in business. So the way these pipe cutters work is... They're brilliant. They really are nice. They basically, the blade just like squeezes its way in between the metal as opposed to like sawing like a saw does. That's going way faster. Here she goes. Boom. Okay, and while we have that in the thingy, we're gonna go ahead and... I don't know why you do this, is there a reason? Yeah, because we'll feel it right now. Feel on the inside and the outside. See how it's like kind of raised? I guess, yeah. This just files it down and makes sure there aren't any sharp parts. You wanna show off how the pipe file works? And then the other side does the outside. Oh, so I need to do both sides. Yep. One thing that you will notice about pipe cutters is like if you feel the outside, you see how it's slightly raised? Mm-hmm. That will make it hard to get the, Do like, to go through more? the bearing. Well, either that or just use a regular file to file that down a little bit. I think it's okay, though. Yeah, I mean, try it. putting the the top part of the headset, which is still on the bike. That fits. Cool, great. This task is kind of a pain in the butt by yourself, I would say. We're gonna grease. Oh boy, that didn't, that's not gonna work. We're defying gravity. <laughs> Just gonna use my fingers. One thing that's noteworthy about this frame is that the bearing cups are integrated, meaning the frame itself is the right shape to hold the bearings. Some bikes, you actually have to press in your bearing cups first before you can put in the bearings. It's nice that we don't have to do that. Because you need a bearing press, which we don't have. Yeah, well, you can also use a two by four and a rubber mallet and <laughs> things like that. We've done it. <laughs> this guy goes on. All right, there it is into its the cup. Why do I feel like this looks short? Now I'm freaking out again, but there's no way. Now we're good. Oh. What? You forgot something. What? You're gonna you're gonna realize it in a second. You're gonna put those on, Did I lose and then you're gonna put the stem on, and then what are you gonna do? Top cap is right here. Which is gonna do what? Okay, rewind. What did you forget? Forgot the star nut. Star nut. Because we're disorganized and I can see it. Therefore, out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, because we've had some bikes that don't have those. Yeah, if you have a carbon steer, which like the road bikes and gravel bikes do, you don't use a star nut. We need our star nut installer, which is over here. I need a rubber mallet and cool. This would be the part where I would Google, which way does it go? <laughs> like that? Tell me you're thinking both directions. This is gonna bend upwards if you put it in that way. This way is gonna go in, so it's gonna be like that. Yeah, because you want it to go in, but you don't want it to come back out. The star nut installer is a tool that you should actually invest in. We have tried many times to install star nuts without one, and it's a really terrible idea. Yeah. Just not worth it. I feel like we did succeed, but... Oh yeah, but it was not great. And they, the star nuts then weren't straight, and like, it was bad. Okay. So that just fits on like that, which keeps it all happy and straight. Ready? Ready. It may not be, yeah, nope, so. That didn't work. It's because the suspension is compressing and because you have a nice floor. So you can either put it in the vise or just hold it from the bottom of the crown. It's not working, is it? Oh. Yeah. So you're, you're getting there. Okay. You need to wait until it's flush. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it wasn't, it would go down, but it doesn't go down. 
All right, give it a look. This should definitely, that should definitely be the thumbnail. There ah. you go. Basically, oh, you yeah. just don't want a gap there. All right. That would have been easier if we had remembered it earlier, but that's just how life goes sometimes. Okay, back, back to where we were a bit ago. Oops. We've actually gotten a lot of questions about these, this uh, stem cap. Oh yeah. This is Niner's Y-A-W-Y-D. You are what you drink oh. stem cap. And it allows you to put a bottle cap on top of it, I'll just like in the description. that guy. So do the top cap first? Yeah. Because you want to squeeze it together first. Yeah, because it's not quite squeezed together, is it? Yeah. There she goes. Yeah, you don't want your headset to be too tight because you want to be able to turn. Yes, <laughs> turning is good. It seems good. Now we'll go ahead and tighten the stem, but I mean, it's not straight or anything, so we'll be coming back to this. I'm just a fan of tightening, leaving bolts in a tight position so that they don't disappear. So we're gonna put your handlebar on because it's a pain to do brakes, brake lines without handlebar. And really? Well, you, actually you can't really because you don't know how long you want your brake lines to be. Carbon prep. Do I have to take this all the way off? Nope, probably not. I suspect you can just loosen it and then slide it through. Which way is up? We're gonna go from this side because there's a bookshelf in the way. So why do we use carbon prep? Why not grease, for example? Um, it has something to do with the like grittiness of carbon prep, yeah. right? Because it's like preventing it from sliding back and forth. Yeah, as well as lubricating it. And if you have like weird lines on your bars, your carbon bars, you should replace them. That looks sort of like scratches. Yeah, even if it's just a scratch, I don't know, you don't want to impale yourself with your handlebars. Which I almost did one time. You almost did. It was scary. But yours didn't actually show any sign, did they? Yeah, they were scored. Oh, they were. Yeah. That's that's how I learned. Yeah. A very valuable lesson. And you also don't want to over tighten. You could use a torque wrench or you could just wing it, which is what we're going to do because we've tightened a few carbon bars in our life. <laughs> You guys will notice that as Sid's tightening these, she's like alternating. So this one says close the gap, so she did the top two first. And then after that, kind of alternating the bottom two and then the top two, so that everything is evenly tightened. Would you like to do the front or the rear brake first? You're the boss, boss. We do whichever one's on top. For this task, you will need your new brakes, oil funnel kit, disc brake hose cut tool thing, brake cutting tool, paint pen, eight millimeter crescent wrench, pokey tool, and Shimano hydraulic mineral oil. Okay, so this is where you think, and it goes like that. And at this stage, you don't really worry about centering your brakes and stuff. You can do that later. And it feels kind of tight because there's Loctite on there. That's okay. Just pull it out. There it goes. Just took more force, took more force than I thought it was going to. Quite the warning label on here. Let me get that off. <laughs> what does it say? Area for re for placement components. Inspect the bar after impacts or cracks. Replace after crash or when cracks are visible. Oh, that was just what we were saying. Great. Well, that went well. I feel like these are the aspects of building a bike that just take forever, and then like there's a lot of them, and then it just oh, this is not good, Mackie. This is not coming off. Not before you know it, you've spent like three years trying to build a one bike. Now that we have finally gotten the stickers off, it's time to actually cut the brakes. First thing is make sure that you're running up the inside of the fork. And that you're accounting for the fact that it's gonna be attached there and that this is, do you care about putting the grips on or do you, are you okay with just estimating it? Here I can approximate. My hand will be here, out a little bit. Sorry, in a little bit, a little bit more. It's hard with your cast on. It's hard with my cast, it'll probably be like there. Well, so that's the thing is it rotates with the front fork, so you don't have to worry. Yeah, you just don't want it too tight. How do you feel about that? Positively. Okay. When we do the rear one, you'll want to be slightly more, you have to think about how it turns. You want to tighten the lever in its approximate place, hold the housing to where it will be approximately, and then turn the bars so that... Which, as Mackie pointed out, does not matter for the front one. Step one. Figure out your length. Step two, remove squiggly wiggly thing on the end. Good cool. job. 
So as you'll see, this has a barb on it. That's why it came in the bag with a second barb or plug. Yeah, so that's actually a plug and you're always gonna cut, like there's a mark here. Oh, okay. You always have to cut at least that amount off. We're threading this thingy widget yeah. on. Then we're gonna cut. Which is again, another one of those tasks that's kind of annoying to do by yourself, but let's see if I can do it. Nice. So this is the Shimano brake cutter tool, brake cut tool. I eh, don't know what it's called, but you do need one of these if you're gonna be installing brakes. So there's our yellow line. Line up the yellow line so with that notch. This guy is gonna lock that there. And this one isn't an exact science on the cut. Like we have some leeway both directions. And so this is the cutter. Hello. Hello, there we go. Just try every which way till you get there. My motto. And then. Yeah, so the you are like cut, you are literally cutting your brake line. So yeah. oil will come out. Oil too much. Yeah, oil just don't like start off. flinging that around and yeah. get oil in your eyes. Honestly, this is the hardest part for me is getting this cutter off. Okay, yeah. so there we go. We've got it, we've got a little bit of oil on there, but nothing. Nothing to lose sleep about. And then barb. I think they actually call it something else, but I'm rather fond of anthropomorphizing all the parts. So we have barb and we have olive and the goal of the exercise is get, get them to play nice with one another. So first barb goes in and plugs the end of this line. That's barb's job. So you line that up. And then this is the part where sometimes we don't have this tight enough and it doesn't work on the first go, but let's see. Yep. I just tighten that like a quarter turn, yeah. Ooh, okay, well that's That might be though. too much. <laughs> you may have to loosen a little because otherwise it can crush the... Uh... Yeah, you don't want to crush things. Okay, that's pretty darn tight. So that was just that screw on the bottom if you are pushing your thing through. Boom. Show us what it looks like there. So you can it's see it's all the way flush, yeah. Gonna pop this guy off, but you hold it upright. That is crucial. Well, that is the oil, oil plug. When in doubt, hold things so that <laughs> stuff doesn't fall out of them. Oh, okay. Okay, you grab me a wrench. And now we're just gonna use crescent wrench. And the goal is to keep that down as much as, like, pushed in there as much as possible. Usually we, this is something we do together. Yeah. Like, somebody pushes. And you want this tight, but you don't want to over-tight. Like, that's pretty good, I'd say. Yeah. You want it tight, but if you over-tighten it, you risk cracking it. Which yeah, which you do not want to do. Beautiful. There she is. All right, one breakdown. So this bike is external. Externally routed for the brake lines, internally for the cables. There are little easy. mounts here, here, running up the frame. Makes it real easy to attach this rear brake. Oh yeah, this thing is a dream. I love this thing so much. I guess we might as well go ahead and zip tie this guy because that'll just save us a lot of like estimating. There are some benefits to external routing, I would say. Oh, it's definitely um, easy. Internal definitely looks nicer, but. You look cute in that hat. What? You look cute in that hat. Oh, thanks. All right, you want to put your hand on here and give me a rough estimate compared to the other. Yeah, we could slide it out a little bit just to give it some extra. We need to test this. Like this is going to be way too tight. Yeah. Not bueno. So how about this is going to be like way too much stuff. Like you don't want that. Oh yeah, here. that's annoying. Yeah, you could do a little tighter than that. I agree. Yeah, that's probably about right. And one thing is when you're marking it, give it an extra centimeter or so, because it actually goes into the lever more than you think it does. Oh, Barb almost got taken out by the screwdriver. It's a dangerous life. And again, let you toss that. I don't know if I have the space here to compress this enough, but I'm just gonna try and we'll see. There she goes. Perfect. We really should just like clear off these shelves and not have other things on them so that I can just 
put stuff there. Or I should be working over by the bench. Why am I always over here? All of these like cockpit setup things, we typically don't worry about that much while we're building the bike. And then when we like are ready to go ride it, well, before we're ready to go ride it. At the end of the build process, sort all that out. Cause it's just like, it's really hard to tell when you have the bike in the stand. Easy peasy. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is do a lever bleed on both of these. Um, pretty much always have to top up your fluid when you cut it, no matter how careful you are. Uh, we have a whole video about how to do lever bleeds. It's a very good skill to learn, even if you don't wanna do full brake bleeds. Um, we'll put a link to that right up there. Let's do this guy and then let's take a break. This is something that is easy to forget to do. Yeah. That's not right. Hold on. I would say this is also like a spot to like be cautious because little bolts, little screws strip really easily. Mm -hmm. You really don't want to strip stuff that's in your fork or in your bike. I mean, you don't want to strip anything, but like you don't need it to be like wildly tight. And you also just need to make sure it's threaded properly before you start having at it. Nice. I don't know. You guys have cats, but these cats really like aggressive petting. Oh yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> oh yes. More, more. <laughs> okay, next we are gonna set up the wheels. So for that, we will need wheels, tires, sealant, lock ring thingy, tire levers, our new rotors, and a valve car remover, and a pump, or a, um, thingy, air compressor thingy. You wanted the Mezcal on the rear. Oh, here it is. Here's the arrow. Are you still going in the right direction? Good yes. Question. Yeah, so this is the part where making sure the rest of it is in the center will help a lot. Squeech, 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 squeech. And you guys should just... <sighs> when you do that, start on the sides like do it on the sides, cause it's a lot easier to get the parts that are like right next to the edges than it is to get the middle. Dang. Yes. Okay. She is on fire. This one goes like this, right? Uh, correct. I don't wanna look for the arrow, I'm lazy. That's the rotor. Pay extra attention to which way you're doing things when you don't have your rotors on yet, cause yeah. <laughs> it's like a lot easier to mess it up. These are beautiful looking. I don't yeah. even care what people say. I know, I'm pretty excited about the tan wall. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. Oh, was close. Very close. There we go. Nice. That, I'm just gonna say, is two tires in a row that you put on without a tire lever. No, that's because these are really soft though. I don't do as well with the enduro casing tires. Oh yeah, no, they're definitely harder, but I think you also are getting, your technique has improved. Okay, I didn't do anything to these, so we're just- But they are new, new very wheels, clean tire, new. yeah. And our, our trick of the little nozzle thing. Oh yeah, excellent. Air compressors are brilliant, man. The air compressor is losing power though. But I think we did it. If you're watching this video and you don't have an air compressor, but you're setting up tires and wheels, you have a couple options. So this is actually a charger pump. It doesn't actually look like it. Some of them are bigger and fatter, but it basically you pump a bunch into this chamber then it releases it all at once. It's like a baby air compressor, basically. The other option is to use a normal pump and watch our video about our secret to setting up tubeless with a floor pump, which we did a lot of for a long time before we had a nice shed and an air compressor. There are a lot of things in bike maintenance that aren't as an exact a science as people will have you believe. And sealant is one of those. Oh, I bet you unscrew that. So you can put it on first and then unscrew it. This doesn't have a hole through it though. That's what I'm confused about. Oh, that's a valve core remover. That's clever. I guess we can do it like, <laughs> all right, wish me luck. I don't know about this. I'm gonna do like half this. Yeah. Don't you think that's usually?
Well done, that was a fast one. It's still going. And... There's a cat hair. A cat hair? Okay. Get off, you cat hair. Probably doesn't, wouldn't hurt anything. That's true. And then you know what comes next. Seal and dance, seal and dance. In case people haven't watched our other videos about setting up tires, why are you sealant dancing? So that the sealant goes everywhere. It's ideal if you do this right before a ride to just go ride, but we're not really that close to riding. Not close to riding and hand. So we dance. It's important to celebrate your successes, <laughs> yeah. like successful tire seating. Any successful tubeless, you never take it for granted. You always dance. celebrate. What's next? Rotas, which since we have center lock rotors is super duper easy. I love center lock rotors. Right, and I gotta get this warning sticker off. Never leave the warning stickers on. Ever. Honestly, like you can if you want. <laughs> That's just, it's another one of those things that like having the logo next to the thing that people will judge you for, for no reason. We don't do that here. So leave <laughs> the warning things on if you want. I don't know, I might make fun of you in a nice way. <laughs> okay, there she goes. Very nice. You do want to do those fairly tight. At least I do. It's good to get to know your tendencies for tightening. I think that's more important than like a torque wrench or anything. It's like, are you someone who over tightens things or are you someone who under tightens things? I am someone who under tightens things, so I can usually comfortably tighten a little bit more than I think is necessary. But if you're like a big dude, you might be the opposite, so then you should under tighten. But rotors are really annoying when they come loose, which pretty much come loose for me every time I build a bike. So probably still not going tight enough. I mean, it, it is 40 Newton meters, which is, oh, See, careful. Yeah, hold, like hold it. it on there. There you go. And then it doesn't turn. Well, that means you probably have it tightened down enough. That was in general pretty easy. So let's go ahead and pop this front wheel on because we can, and it gets it out of the way. And the bike starts looking more like a bike. Yeah, which is always satisfying. And then speaking of things that you should take off. Yes. I guess now we get to go on to the exciting stuff, which is making it a single speed and installing a biocentric bottom bracket. I've never done this. You've never no, done this. But how hard could it be? <laughs> For this, we will need our biocentric bottom bracket from Niner, chain, cranks, front chain ring, rear cog, chain brake. Um, we are gonna use a torque wrench for this. Our chain connector, putter runner thingy, majig. I love this tool. Allen keys, grease, spacers. For these, <laughs> cat hair. Spacers for the rear cog, tightener thingy widget for stuff, the cassette and the cranks. Plumber's tape. Niner actually makes a single speed thing shim. An anti-derailleur hanger. Uh, yeah, a non-derailleur hanger. Derailleur placeholder. I think um, that's upside down because you want the like, oh, like yeah, this, there yeah. you go. Okay, what's going on here? Through axle goes through there, but I don't think you want it that loose. Okay, so we've got this all sorted out. It does have a little bit of play in it, but it won't once the wheel is in there. And we looked on Google and that's apparently how it's supposed to be. So do you want to talk us through conceptually why you can't just have a single speed with a normal bottom bracket? Like, yes. why can't you just have only one cog? Let's look at this bicycle as an example. So the way that geared bicycles deal with chain slack is by having a derailleur that pulls them backwards and keeps the chain tight. Like that's why the chain just moves that much. Clutches do that even better, um, which is awesome. If you don't have a derailleur, which we obviously do not on the single speed, you have to have the chain. The chain has to be like the exact size to fit around the front chain ring and then around the rear cog and then back to the front chain ring. And if you have too much chain slack, it'll just fall off the chain ring or the cog. And that's very annoying. There are a couple of options. One is- A chain tensioner. A chain tensioner, which is essentially just a tiny derailleur that doesn't allow you to shift gears. Which kind of defeats some of the like great parts of a single speed. Another option is sliding dropouts and 
you, this bike does not have that, but basically there's like a thing you tighten here that pushes the rear axle backward or lets it come forward and you use that to set your chain tension. Or you use a eccentric bottom bracket, which Niners is called the biocentric. This part fits into the frame. Yep. That's the like PF30 part. But then the entire thing rotates so you can like, you can move the crank from here, back to here, up to the top, etc., And you use that to tighten the chain line so that it's exactly right for your chain ring cog combo. Okay, so this is gonna be the drive side. So these must be the different kinds. This is the kind that we have. So you're gonna grease this, this, and then you grease your bolts. So the other thing that I read when I was researching this a little bit is they recommend this plumber's tape okay. around here, mostly just to like, to keep it from creaking. Just a single layer, you think? Yeah. It's rather difficult to not have this be like a little wrinkly. That's okay, a little wrinkly is fine. I mean, basically it says clean it and install it. <laughs> That's sort of what I got also. Okay, so it's obviously not that complex. You agree with me that this is the drive side? I'm on the drive side of the bike. Yes. I grease under here on this guy. I think they did show both top and bottom. We did have a couple people on Instagram say like, put a lot of grease on for single speed bottom brackets. Yeah, so they don't creak. Do you reckon it's gonna be like this or do you think it's gonna be like that? Cause I don't think we should set ourselves up for having to turn it. I don't think there's any way to know. Okay, just push it in. Yeah, as straight as you that can. Just Great. wadded up all your tape. That's okay. Did I forget grease anywhere? No, I think that was it. Hey, Katie. Hello. Hi, Jack. Hi, baby. Coming to help? All right, there we go. Like, this is probably a bit the trick. I wonder if I should have done this the other way around. You don't want plumber's tape here. Uh, we could put plumber. We probably should put plumber's tape there also. Okay, it's going to be hard now that it's all greasy, but yeah. I guess we'll try. Okay. I think try to get a little on the short end, probably. Yeah, I'm not sure it's good that it's there, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna do any harm. Nice. Um, but we don't wanna do the bolts right now, correct? I think we put the bolts in, but we don't tighten them down. I guess you're right, you do want them connected for that. Grease the bolt heads and threads. I feel weird combining grease and Loctite, but maybe that's... Maybe they're not worried about the locking and the, probably these bolts just come with, like if you buy these bolts, they come with Loctite, would be my right. guess. I have no idea why there's just so much cat hair floating around in the air. Okay, I'm like pulling these all the way in, but I'm not gonna crank. Yeah, I'd go until they're all the way in and then, and then we'll back it off. Okay, now the bottom bracket is installed, but not tight, is that correct? I don't think it's tight. I mean, right. I don't, it doesn't really feel like it's gonna like turn easy peasy. So I'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there though. Please stay this time. Hey, that's the notch, I'm pretty sure. Okay, and then one of these widgets is the lock ring to get that to lock on. So just drop that guy down onto it. All right. Yeah. I have to say the new way of changing crank, like chain rings is pretty nice, I think. Well, previously you had to take out four bolts and put a different chain ring on. Sure, but you didn't necessarily have to take your crank off or did That's you? true. Sometimes yeah. you could get away with not taking the crank off. That's supposed to be very tight. It was pretty tight. I'm just afraid of slipping off and cutting my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> That's as tight as it's gonna get. Grease, grease. Yeah, mostly you just care about here and here. I like to grease the whole thing, just to be thorough. <laughs> that is plenty of grease. People said to put a lot of grease. I don't want to <laughs> listen to your bike creaking all over the place. Let's remove some more cat hairs. This is getting bad. Okay, yeah, that was probably too much. Uh, wiggle up and down slowly. There you go. So we now have the crank on all the way. It was not fitting easily because we had not tightened these bolts. So we should have tightened these bolts. <laughs> cat hairs. The creaks, I'm blaming it on the cat hairs because we've got <laughs> plenty of grease. It does have plenty of grease. Okay. Spacer. 
I feel like these are sometimes some of the most annoying bike build things are like spacer. Most of our worst bike builds have been because we were like missing one tiny spacer or something. <laughs> I shouldn't have done so many push-ups yesterday. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yesterday Sid did all the push-ups. I didn't do any. Okay, cool. And now we tighten this guy. Yeah, so now you screw that guy in. Which is righty tighty. He doesn't want to go, does he? Do you use a little thing? You can, yeah. There we go. That's much better. Using tools, like caveman ancestors. And then you do that until you, you run just, out of gap. No, I think you do it just till it's tight. Like now feel if it, does it feel like it's not spinning easily? Yeah, there's some resistance Yeah, so, sure. so loosen it a that. little bit. Uh, this, yeah, some are loose and some are tighten. Feels pretty good, you wanna feel it? Yeah, it feels good. All right, well that was easy. I'm actually really amazed by how straightforward that was. Yeah, but I feel like that wasn't the hard part. I don't know, sometimes that's the hard part. So shall we put your cog on your wheel? Yes, and that's where things get interesting because it depends how many spacers. Maybe put the wheel on and then we'll see if we can get an idea of where the cog should be approximately. So that's going to tighten this um, derailleur hanger or not derailleur hanger thing right up. The anti-derailleur hanger. Okay, so now you want to sight down from here and see if you can get an idea of where that cog should be approximately. How about there? That looks pretty close to me. Depends whether I close one eye or not. If I close one eye, that's solid, but this is one of those yeah. gotta start somewhere. Exactly. So we have to put enough spacers to get us to the yellow line and then more on the other side. And you probably want to put some grease on everything because yeah. free hub bodies like to go creaky, creaky, creaky. This is probably excessive, but you only live once. Is there any strategy to having big ones before, after? Nope. I would probably put big spacer last sure. on this side, just so that you have that makes sense a little me. bit of gap. And you're gonna have, I think it needs a little, one more small one at least. Did you want it to stick out a bit? Yeah, because this guy has to actually mm -hmm. tighten down yeah. on it. Okay. We're cautiously optimistic. Actually, That's not really. Way. I feel like it would be a miracle if we nailed this on the first. That's is this a tight one? 40 Newton meters, so yes. I love the look of it, man. Yeah, it does look really <laughs> slick. <laughs> really slick. So basically, now it's just trial and error. So we trial and error this lineup, and then we also trial and error the chain tension. Well, the chain tension, it's less of a trial and error and more of a adjust it to be tight. So, so chain, I guess. Yeah. Words on the outside. Words on the outside. I'm learning things every day. Every day. So we don't want to cut it, right? Or do we? Where is the crank right now? Looking at the biocentric bottom bracket. It's towards the front. Okay. So we can make it looser, but we can't make it tighter. So let's do this. Let's uh, let's rotate the yeah, crank. Yeah, because you don't want to start with it at yeah, the loosest. We, we should have thought it. of that earlier. Yeah. Okay, so first I need to loosen the 12. Yeah, first you loosen those. Oh no. <laughs> no, you know what? It doesn't matter if this side of the crank is on or not. Yeah, as long as it's not slipping out, I guess, yeah. for the chain line aspect of things. Yeah. We are gonna rotate this so that it is, oh, that's so easy. That's crazy, watch it like. Oh move. yeah, that's cool. Um, we are gonna rotate this so that we are at the loosest. Okay. So we're starting at the loosest possible and then we will cut the chain link the chain and then tighten from there. Yeah. And we're gonna have to leave the side off because with the XTR cranks, we apparently cannot get a thing in there. Um, our chain line looks good. Somehow we nailed it. Good job. 10 points for you. And I guess that's always something you could fix later if for some reason, but I think it's fine. It looks pretty Thinking darn good to me. This is kind of cool on a single speed because you don't have to like, or like you don't have to like calculate anything. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you mean like you're not adding any links or anything? Yeah, we're gonna cut here and then we'll add a quick link and it'll be very loose and then hopefully it'll get tight enough when we rotate the bottom bracket around. Could we do shorter? No, no. because we're already at the loosest. Yeah. This guy right here. That's your point. Okay. 
I really like this train break. It's Me like too. it's like a luxury train chain break. <laughs> All those years of using those little fiddly ones. Yeah. This one like locks it in place. There she goes. Um, you wanna find my quick link? Quick link. Right here. Cool, that was easy. And my quick link attacher tool. Right here. <laughs> So this is a little interesting because you can't release tension from it at oh, all. good point. But that's why it's smart that we did it the way we did, right? Because yeah. if you were trying to do this when it was tight, it would be like really, really hard. That's not right. Um, what do you do if you break a chain on a single speed? Like, do you have to turn that bottom bracket on the trail to like be able to get enough? I don't think so because I think there is enough slack in a chain. Like the chain isn't gonna be s like super tight all the time. There is going to be some slack in it. You just don't want enough slack that it can come off. I was actually going to do some Googling and see if we can figure out how tight we want. Come on, stay. It's really greasy and does not want to stay on. I feel like usually once I get it into the little holes, it doesn't go anywhere. Come on. I'm annoyed because usually this is really easy for me and I don't understand what the problem is. Unless we have like the wrong size quick link or something. There we go. Okay, so that's like real, real loose. Okay, so now we're going back over here. I only went a little bit, so I'm wondering if we went too. Let's see how loose tight are we? Beginning. Oh no, that's pretty good. You want it tighter? Let's try going a little tighter. That's actually it's okay. Not that's that's going anymore. that's totally tight. So let's loosen okay, a little well, bit. I literally only went to like a little bit more. There we go. Okay, let me Google real quick so, and yeah, see. So now this think... is at the bottom. I don't know if that matters. I guess you just set up your seat height to the center of that and it doesn't really matter. Technically, matter, we but... can make the bottom bracket higher, but in general, I think I would prefer to have the bottom bracket lower. So I would yeah, go Yeah, I think that would be good because this is already a high bottom bracket bike. Okay, so what is your conclusion? Loose or tighter? It's all over the place. I think that's good. I think this is mad tight. But, but that's okay, right? Because you don't have to shift. Well, yeah, but the thing is that they say that the looser the chain is, the faster it is because there's less like pressure on everything. Yeah. But if it's too loose, then it'll fall off. Sure. So let's go a little bit looser. That's my thought just too. Just a tiny bit. That's too much. Well, it sort of just moves yeah, in. No, I, fits I, and jerks. Little tighter. Let's leave, let's leave it there. That seems pretty good to me. You wanna pass me the torque wrench and I will put these to 12. Yes. Newton meters. Is it a Newton meter or a nanometer? <laughs> Newton meter. <laughs> Nanometers are like one millionth of a meter. We've had this torque wrench pretty much forever. We don't use it very often. There are certain things that you should use a torque wrench for and one of them is these. And this is probably one of those like alternate back and forth. So get that one fairly tight and then do the other side. Torque wrenches are great, man. It's so easy, but I think when you work on bikes a lot, you, you can't be tightening every bolt with the torque wrench. Like it takes way too much time. Yeah. Look, they were perfectly even. That is perfectly even. Mm -hmm. uh, do the other one again. You generally want to do like each one yeah. twice just cause. It is Excellent. Really satisfying. Let's feel the change. Yeah, I think that's good. Somebody in the comments who knows single speeds really well can tell me if they think that looks good or not. <laughs> Uh, we are going to do the dropper post next. Fun times. And for that, we will need a cable, a dropper post, Allen keys, saddle, housing, and cable cutters. Do we also want our park tool cable yes. routing kit? So I guess first up, we're going to take this out of the stand. So does it feel still feel light? Oh yeah. Yes. How much do you think this is gonna be? Like 20, 22? I don't know. I really just, do, I don't know what to think. Cause I haven't been on a, a non-geared bike in a long time. Like I, well, we had hard tails two years ago. How much did those weigh? 24? They were that heavy? I can't remember. I, I, I honestly, I don't remember. I mean, we had gears obviously. Hucky ducky. Baby drop of post coming right up. So I guess we first need to decide how we're gonna run this, because it's not really designed to run. This blue one right here goes yeah. in here, comes out here. That's for an externally routed dropper post. Okay, but we don't have an externally yeah, routed so dropper. So Basically, we can pull that one out. Yeah. And the, the red one is for 
the front derailleur, so you can pull that one out too. Blue one. Okay, hopefully that came out. Red one. I mean, I think we're gonna pull all of these out, right? Because the yellow one's the rear derailleur. Good point, you can pull yellow one out too. If you need to use these, don't pull them out. Don't like get your new bike and be like, ooh, have fun, I will pull on all these strings. Cause yeah, then you'll be really sad. In this case, however, they were not useful. Dropper post, you so want the lever on go, this side, you're gonna yeah, go in here, go in there, up and this. We'll so we're gonna use our handy dandy cable routing kit. It's possible we could just direct route it, but why make ourselves suffer so much when we have the proper tool for the job? And it also, it could be a total pain. Definitely didn't roll this up. I definitely just wadded it in a knot the last <laughs> time, and that's the problem. No, baby, no. Come on. Nicely Voila. done. I love this thing. I'm not gonna lie. I need to run myself a little bit more slack here, apparently. Grab your liver. Oh, there's a cable in there. <laughs> and housing. And housing. I guess I thought it would come with the dropper post, not with the lever. Is this one gonna play nice with this? It does. Like this, basically. Except it's backwards. There you go. Yes. <laughs> yep, I thought something didn't look right there. But okay, yeah, so that's gonna go to there. We're not gonna bother connecting the lever at all because we have to have the lever all the way off to get this post in, I remember that. Because last time we thought we were smart and we connected it first. That's probably too tight. Try, tri try, twist, try twisting the balls the other way. Yeah, that seems good. So we need to mark here. Yep. And we need to remember to put that guy on, so I'm going to pull him out right now. Good plan. Wow, it just disappears, the hole. That's kind of cool. It's easy to forget these things, and that's really a bummer. So now, what are we... Calculating how far your seat yeah. is going to go in. That looks like 52 and a half to me. Minus two, so 51 and a half. What is your seat height usually? Sorry, you said 52 and a half minus what? Two. 50 and a half. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this looks rather tilted up, doesn't it? Okay, so 50 and a half, you need what? 74 and a half. Okay, so you need an additional 25? 24. 24, okay. 16. So we just need this. To be 16 centimeters shorter. That should get you 16. Post. I get this in there before. There we go. Should yep, we pull, pull the cable? That. That's better. Carbon prep. So then it's like, yeah. Okay. Bah. <laughs> I hate this so much. Like it's great. Like the concept is great. Yeah. And but it's such a pain the first time, and then once you get it connected, then you pretty much never have to deal with right. it again, in which case it's fine. This is proper tool holding method mm -hmm. being demonstrated here. Yeah, make sure you have a sharp end in your mouth. I mean, another ferrule.
Yeah, Nike was gonna use pedals that were used, but then we remembered we have these. Yeah, I mean, blue pedals, you kinda gotta do it. On this bike, totally. Do you want to uh, share the trick for how to, which way to put yeah. your pedals on? Well, we've talked about this in other videos, but you just twist your Allen key the same direction that your wheels turn. There are lots of different ways to remember pedals out there, and I learned go towards the front of your bike, which works until you put your bike upside down or you're standing on the other side or just like, I feel like which way your wheels turn always works. At this stage, we're not gonna do this in this video, but at this stage we would do setup things, cockpit setup, measure the seat height, center the brakes, not adjust the derailleur because there isn't one. <laughs> Should probably pop her on the scale and see what yeah, she weighs. That's very important. See what we think first. Been doing squats with that 17 pound kettlebell, and obviously, it's not a kettlebell. We tried to make dumbbells out of <laughs> concrete. It didn't end up being heavy. It's like the size of like a 30 pound kettlebell, but it only weighs 17 pounds. I think this is heavier than that. I'm gonna go with 22 because it's light, yeah. but it's not like road bike light. Well, you have to guess too. We'll take bets. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm gonna say under 22. I'm gonna say it's 21. 1.9. <laughs> no, I'll say 21. Zero, which it's already doing. No, no way. way! That's so light, holy crap. I gotta take a picture of that. 20 pounds, Okay, you know what you ounces. have to do now is shave off 11 ounces. <laughs> so it can be <laughs> sub 20. Oh, Jack, what do you think? Are you impressed too? Yeah, 20 pounds, huh? What I'm very impressed by, in addition to the weight, is that you built that bicycle by yourself. With some help from Jack yeah. and you.